guys, Karen here with another gardening video. And this one, I'm inside my house. Anyways, very interesting part of the house and it's right into the entryway into our kitchen. Um, today my video is about the herb garden. So we all know that during the spring, summer uh, growing season, the herbs grow like crazy. And so, so much so that it's probably, well, I don't know about you, but for us, it's way too much for us to use in one season for our family. And so what I've learned um, just in the last year and a half, uh, from last year to this year, uh, last year when Maya and I started the garden, we went to the farmer's market and we were drying out herbs. Those herbs lasted us all late last fall uh, last fall and all the way through the winter time until we still have herbs from last year that are dry not too many but we still have some so then um you know I'm, i like to i'm i'm an introvert always thinking um and so i thought well if we uh, cultivated these herbs ourselves which meant we had to get our hands on a lot of herbs which you have to do early on in the season um, either you're going to do it by seed or you're going to get the um, the seedlings um, either way you have to get a hold of those plants so we did uh, then I found out that when the plants are growing in order for them to continue to grow throughout the spring summer season you have to uh, harvest those uh, herbs, whether you're using them or not. And you know, I used to think that when you see, uh, well, when we would see a chef on TV, then they would grab a, you know, they'd take a few sprigs of basil. That's how you did it. But no, you don't want your herbs to flower unless you want to just see the beautiful flowers. Um, but once they start to flower, the plant is telling itself that it no longer needs to produce the herb for you in the herb form just the now it's going to give you the flower so it looks really pretty in order to not get that flower you have to harvest those uh, herbs and what do you do when it's only four of you or you don't use herbs like that all the time so you would try to have an herb area in your home uh, or somewhere to dry these things out or you're gonna hand them out to neighbors, which I've done too, and still have way too many. Uh, so anyway, um, so I don't know about you, but one of my favorite uh, movies is Pride and Prejudice, uh, Sense and Sensibility. When you watch those, I used to watch those and in, in the movie, um, you will see people going out and they would dry out flowers or dry out lavender or whatever the case may be and then go, they tie it up and hang it up um, and dry it out and then yeah that was a cool part to me I would notice that so anyway I'm going to get to it now and I'm going to show you uh, how my husband uh, he was so kind how he did it so simply this is not even difficult so I'm going to show you how I dry out my herb so first off I always have I have my outdoor gardening scissors here this is by Fiskars they're dirty um, and I use the um, I don't know what this is but okay so this is our this is my herb drying area so as you can see some it's my neighbor's house over there um, as you can see yeah oh, little, little, little. and here and you and here and also here so we I started over here and this is the area that gave me the idea where the first area that gave me the idea in here was this so I just hung this up and this I use this um, for everybody's the keys and what have you to put here but then after a while there was just me and my husband here and um, so we didn't put our keys here anymore. And so the first last year, our first time gardening and going to the, well, we always went to the farmer's market, but buying a whole bunch of herbs, I tied them up here. And like I showed you with 
this tomato twine, you know, what you normally use to stake your plants, to hold your plants to the stake, um, I started tying it to the hook. And this is where I started because I really didn't think about using the wall. And then what I do here, as you can see, uh, this is pencil. I keep my pencils up here. And peppermint, and here it is. The, these are both peppermint here. And this is also per peppermint, but I switched it out because I'm trying to keep everything with, um, I'm trying to keep everything together. And it's, uh, so if it's peppermint, I want peppermint to stay together. Um, so this is my peppermint area. Also over here, I harvest, harvested some of Maya's grapefruit mint. And all I had my husband do, he put screws in because I was trying to put nails in. But um, this wall doesn't hold the nails properly. So he came and just put the screws up there. I really didn't care what he put up there just so I could hang my stuff. And he knows that because it would have been a mess. So he just came and did it really neatly. And it was very kind of him. So this is grapefruit mint here. Um, this is Thai mint. Um, and this is apple teeny mint. I just put apple up there, but this is apple teeny mint. Um, par our parsley is growing crazy. So you're going to see parsley everywhere. <laughs> and then down here, I found a little nail. I have lemon balm growing in the garden. And, uh, so then this is if little pieces fall off, like pieces of parsley fell off while I was, um, tying it up. Then I just uh, lay out a, a napkin and allow it to dry there. And then I, I just let it dry out and then put it into a Ziploc, Ziploc bag or transfer it to a jar like these. Here I have some calendula drying out the flower. You can use it for a balm or what have you. And I also have tomatoes from the garden drying out. I mean, <laughs> not drying out. I wait for them to turn to uh, ripen up. And we had a lot of jalapenos, so I um, did some canning yesterday. Um, and then here's our other wall here. So as the herb garden has grown, he had to put in more screws here. And so this is my basil area. So this is uh, pesto basil, pesto basil. This is purple basil. And up here I have some Thai basil growing lemon basil as well as sweet basil lots of sweet basil but not enough to cult to harvest a whole lot yet here all of this is parsley so these two are have been drying for at least a week and this is one that was just put up yesterday um here I have marjoram uh drying and dill is right here so let me take you to the other side here. Okay, so this is oregano and this is called barbecue. Oh, so let me just tell you this. So at first, this, uh, uh, this dry erase board was put here. So our kids, we've been in our house now for a few years. So our kids would know what the schedule was going on, who had what going on, and where they were supposed to be. But I never took it down. And at first, before he put everything in, um, I just told him to leave it so that I could just write underneath, hence like oregano or something. That's not oregano. But uh, I just leave it there because I like it and I can. Anyway, <laughs> and so... We, he, I just had him put the screws up here at the top. So I have oregano here. This is barbecue rosemary. This is lemon grass um, growing in our garden. All of these are growing in the garden this, this year. So excited about that. Both of these are just rosemary. I have lavender here and sage. Um, and as you can see, I, I've marked on the wall, wait, I'm too high, marked on the wall up there so I know exactly what's what. So when I go to put it in a jar, I can label the jar appropriately. This is our, um, so all of these are, this is uh, lemon thyme, lemon thyme, and these are just regular thyme. As you can see, in Maya's garden, it had already started flowering, so... I want it to grow all the way until August, so I quickly snipped all of that 
back so that it can continue growing. So I had quite a bit from there. Down here, um, and as you can see, the reason why I use the ties is because I could tie it along the end of the herb itself and then I wrap it around the screw so it doesn't fall. And so this is marjoram again, um, purple sage. This is another thing of oregano. Yeah, and parsley. So when I put it all together, I know which jars to put, uh, I know which jars to put everything in. And at the end of the season, we will uh, use everything or put it into jars and then see how much we actually have. So far, we haven't even made it into summer yet. And uh, we already, uh, we've already added way more screws and whatnot. So you don't need a whole big fancy setup is what I'm really just trying to tell you. Um, have fun with it. You want to check out Pride and Prejudice. There, I don't know which part in that whole long series where they're going and, and finding um, things. Um, but they go out and they, I mean, you could just look up how people are harvesting their um, herbs. But it's not, it's not, um, you just need a place where it gets a lot of air flow and everything can just dry out and then you just harvest it it's just amazing you know so really guys i just find it quite interesting that i used to go to the store and purchase little jars of these items and pay like three to five dollars for it depending on what it was now mind you you're not going to be able to get everything but when you harvest the herb you know, once you have enough of them, all you have to do is, if you have a food processor, you're gonna just grind it down. If you want, if you want it that fine, you can do that. Um, we haven't decided how we want it yet, but I can show you. So I'll show you. This is some lemon basil that we just put into this jar. And, oh, it smells so good. And so it, you can see right here what it looks like once it's dried, and. Um, yeah, once it's dried, you can put it in a food processor and it'll break it down even further. Um, oh, this is good. Um, I'm a scent person too. But anyway, I hope you found this helpful. So, with that being said, I won't take up any more of your time. Have a happy Memorial Day weekend, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!